How's it going? Today we're gonna to do a little how-to pattern video. There's a lot to know about patterning and this is just gonna be a short basic intro to it because honestly, if you look at someone who patterns in an upholstery shop, they're usually on the upper tier of the job spectrum because they actually have to know how to install, dismantle, they have to know exactly where to put seams, why to put them there, to compensate the stretch and the pull of the material. So there's kind of a lot involved. But I'm gonna kind of go over right now and just show you a little quick how-to so we can get going on it. We're gonna just use tape. It's really easy to use. You've seen me use this in the past if you watch our other videos. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go through and tape off half the seat. Because if we did right, our seat's symmetrical. If we did wrong, our seat's not symmetrical. Then we'd have to pattern out the whole seat. I know that this seat is symmetrical because I made it. All right, so we just went through, I taped this off. We don't always use tape. On motorcycle seats, it's just easier, it's quicker, and we have it around. A lot of times you could use clear plastic or different vinyls or different materials and lay it on there and use that to pattern it. So one of the things with patterning is even though we're putting tape over it, a lot of times you use material for patterning because the material will fold like the material is going to fold. And you do have many types of materials that you have to actually think about. You have uh, one-way stretch, two-way stretch, you know, super stretches that stretch everywhere. And those will determine how you're going to do your patterns in a lot of cases. I find that if you just pretend that you have one-way stretch material on everything and you pattern it properly, everything will work good. So what I did, I just went around, like I said, tape this off, and I'm just gonna put our marks where we know it's gonna fold. If you were to take vinyl, leather, whatever, leather does usually stretch a little bit better, and you're gonna go around an edge here, and you had this piece here. Obviously, when you come up over here, no matter what you do, you can't fold this over. You know, like super stretch, you might be able to heat and stretch it, but the super stretch stuff doesn't work well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a seam everywhere we think there's gonna be a problem. So we're gonna start off here. This is gonna be one of our seams. And we're gonna do a single top stitch on here. This I'm gonna put a band here just because I like to break it up myself. And then this one here, I think what we're gonna end up doing is just coming like this. Sometimes I'll put a stitch on the side of the seat when it's really wide like this to kind of break it up. And then I'm just gonna keep this one and have this kind of flow with it and come off the back. This one here, how are we gonna do this one here? We're gonna have this one, we know we need a stitch here. We have this one come around here, and we'll just carry it up. No, we're just gonna come down here, just like that. That'll look better. And this is pretty much smooth, so I'm not gonna do anything. A lot of times I'll put a stitch down here to break it up, but because this seat is so far over, I will not do that. Now, another thing when we're doing patterning, you'll see little lines in it, right? Those lines are where we mark so that we know when to sew two pieces together. Every time you do these, you want them always different. You never wanna get in the habit of doing the same markings. So I'm gonna put one mark here, you put two here, I'll put one here, maybe two down there, uh, one over here, we'll do three here, I'll do one here, one here. We're gonna go through here, we could do one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two. So now we have them all marked differently and then we'll label it. So this is the front seat, the front of the front seat, back, middle this is the rear seat this is the back it's the front right right and then the other piece is going to be the left we'll put down here right side we'll put down here front a lot of times you'll mark too if you're if you're patterning this out for someone else to do to use you could put like french seam top stitch whatever you're going to be doing in your upholstery i know on this one i'm going to do a single top stitch here and a single top stitch here this is going to be a very basic seat where these marks are this is exactly where your if you cut this exact and you try to sew it together, it's gonna to be too small and the whole pattern's gonna be small. So once we cut this out, we're gonna add an additional piece. Well, let me show you, let's cut this out. Cut this out. So as I remove this piece here, You can see the center line there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, which I think I might have forgot to say, the first thing you do when you do your seats is you mark your center points. Get all your center points this way. You can start working your way off and make sure everything's symmetrical left to right. Now I'm just gonna cut along this straight edge here, make sure it's straight, which it is. I'm just gonna cut this right along here. Get rid of that. So now if you were to take this piece, which was right here, 
And if we pattern this out exactly like we see here, it's gonna be too short, because when we sew these together, it's gonna come in three eighths or half inch, whatever you decide for your savage to be. We usually use three eighths of an inch. So what we have to do is when we pattern this now, we're gonna add three eighths of an inch all the way around the area. And obviously this is only half. So when we pattern our piece out too on the material, which I'll show you, we're gonna do this and then we'll flip it and that'll give us a mirror image. All right, so right now I'm just cutting out the little V notches in the edge of the material. These are the, mat the marks that we use to align the pieces together. I am officially losing my mind. This is the third time I've shot this segment in the video. First time I tried to use our GoPro because my phone was dead and it had a corrupt file and I couldn't upload it. Second time, I went to my iPhone and evidently never recorded it. I just sat here talking to a blank telephone. Now here we are. What I was doing in the first video that was corrupted was I laid our pattern down that we had made from the seat. Then just went through and transferred all of our V's on there, which I think I showed you already. Marked our center points. Then you simply have to, well actually I also put a couple of dashes on there. This way I can take my trusty dusty measuring apparatus and I just simply measured over so I started from the outside edge and went to the middle and this is six and a quarter from the outside to the middle six and a quarter so six and a quarter times two is twelve and a half and I made sure that it went to twelve and a half and I just did that a couple times now I put those little marks there so that when I fold it not only do I go by my center points but now I can stop this right up there and feel comfortable and safe that I'm in the right position. So then I just marked around with our space pen and put our little V's in there and I just gotta trim those out. And wanted to show you what these do, what they are for patterning. Oh, another thing, I don't know which video was in now, but um, when you're patterning, another thing I didn't tell you, I was keeping a secret, when you put, write your patterns down, you put which way you want the stretch. So on this particular material, I want the stretch going front to back. So when I pull it, it stretches out backwards. If you did it this way, when you pulled it back, um, it wouldn't stretch as much, but it would stretch more side to side. And on this bike, I feel I need it to stretch front to back more. Sometime in the future video, we'll go more into detail about the stretch of the materials and all that, because this is a one-way stretch. You have two-way stretches and you have um, all stretches, which you could just pull around everything. And um, I'm not a big fan of those. I've seen a lot of failure with those. But anyways, back to patterning. After we pattern this, we take our materials. The reason you always do alternating alignment points is so you don't get your patterns mixed up. So now I did like one, two, three, which is kind of weird that I did that. And then one down there, which I forgot to cut out. I'll have to cut that out now. And then what you do is start off, you put your material face to face. You go to your first alignment tab, which is up here, right? You take your first alignment tab and you're gonna actually fold it. This is kind of weird doing it backwards and not in the machine, but so you're gonna start off and you're gonna start sewing. Do, 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 do. And then you're gonna keep going. Do, 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 do. And line these guys up here. One thing, if you do a good pattern, you're not gonna have to stretch the material. If you have to, and this goes with why patterning is so important because, and you have to know, you know, sewing and installations and all that stuff. What happens is if you don't do a really good pattern, someone might say, oh, you know what, look, we'll move, this, this V's are off. So what I'll do is I'll stretch this bottom material. Well, if you stretch that bottom material, now that top material is gonna wanna go where that goes. So that's most likely gonna give you a wrinkle or a pucker or just really ruin the pattern. You want everything kind of just nice and easy, just fall into place. And then you keep going around and you're stitching, stitching, stitching. And that's the one I didn't cut out on the other one. But you just keep going, going until they all line up and then you're good. We're going to be doing more videos on basic sewing. This was just a basic patterning video just to show you some of the stuff that we do and why we do it. Hopefully you like it. Hopefully it helps. I want you to, you know, if you want like, share, subscribe, all that stuff so you can see our future videos because we will be doing basic sewing. And you'll get to see how these hash marks actually go together and why they're so important. We're gonna do more videos on like in-depth patterning and stuff because there's a lot to know about patterning. There's always like, I could take a motorcycle seat and take five in a row and patterning them. Each one's gonna be slightly different. Then you jump to car seats and we might even dabble in boat stuff in the future just to show people the difference because automotive upholstery, motorcycle seats, 
and marine and home furniture are totally different beasts. The automotive and motorcycle go together a little bit better because you have to sculpt your foam and make sure it's really good. Whereas on the boats, they kind of rely on the covers to do a lot of the work. And on home furniture, it's mainly you just pad it up and your covers keep the shape and the foam really doesn't as much. But we're gonna go into great detail with that. So please like, share, subscribe, get out into the garage, into your basement, build something, build something custom, try this stuff. It's really awesome to do. It's so rewarding to actually sit there and make something from nothing. Hopefully that watching our videos kind of will inspire you guys to do more and you know just try things because it is really fun to do this stuff.